2% over the past 24 hours. Joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Michelle Schneider, Managing Director of Financial <laughs> Publisher Market Gauge Group in New Mexico. Hello there, Michelle. So I guess one question out there I have for you is, are you going to be buying into this Bitcoin futures ETF that we'll be launching today? Not today, for sure, but that's my style. With every IPO or any new issue that comes out, we're never like to be the first ones in. So I like to look at some his historical point, not to mention the fact that if we're looking at Bitcoin itself, even though the price is very exciting here, it also is into some resistance at the all-time high. And as a technical type of trader, I like to look at both sides. So we could blast through that resistance and keep going. Maybe that would make me more interested in Beto. But at the same time, it could also be some giant double top. You have to have an open mind here. So first one out? No, not, not us. But nonetheless, there's so many other things to do in this space, in the whole cryptocurrency, mining space, that uh, NFT space. This is really where we have our focus right now. And this, to me, represents how much there is to do and will continue to evolve as we uh, move along here. Oops, I'm not hearing you. I'm sorry. Lawrence, I can't. There are hear some you. companies out there that that seem to um, uh, load up on that that loaded up on Bitcoin on their balance sheet and uh, acted as if they were an ETF. Now there's an ETF on the market. Is now the time to sell those companies with their extra with their little bit of premium and their and their uh, their idiosyncratic risk there and uh, buy the ETF? Is it is there a trade to be had in selling one and buying the other? You mean like, for example, selling MicroStrategy and buying Bitto, that kind of thing? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Well, right. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I, it's, not, it's not something that I had explored. I mean, it's interesting, though, you bring up something, considering we're looking at it the way we're looking at commodities futures, where you would do spread trading, where you would have be long one thing and short another, it's possible that that can work out that way. At this time, they seem to be more correlated. MicroStrategy has gone crazy, has, has all of the companies that are related to uh, cryptocurrency right now, including the mining companies. So I wouldn't be so fast to do that, but it would be interesting, I think, to watch for potentially. Michelle, some people have been critical of this Bitcoin futures ETF, saying that it's a bad investment um, compared to a spot ETF, um, because you obviously there are many other ways to buy Bitcoin. One of the arguments people bring up is this risk of contango bleed, and you know, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But I, I'm just curious, like, do you think a Bitcoin futures ETF is is not a good investment? I mean, given that there are so many ways to buy Bitcoin at the spot price. No, I think it is a good investment. As I said, though, I think you need to see the dust settle a little bit here, particularly as we're saying the prices of everything, including Ethereum, are right now into this resistance, particularly Bitcoin, again, being near its all-time high. So I would look at it more from that way. But if you are a technical trader, there are two ways to look at things. When you break through these big barriers, which we could potentially do with Bitcoin right now, then you have a momentum trade. And as a momentum trade in the futures market, you can go parabolic pretty easily. So I think that people should have some idea here if they're going to get involved, not to stay aside, but to actually even understand your risk. And the best way to look at risk when you don't have historical price data for this new ETF is to look at the coin itself. So what do we know? We know that 60,000 is probably a really good pivotal point right now. And that if it gets through 64, 65, it can go to 75, 80 easy. And if that's how you trade with some basis of knowledge and some basis of risk reward, then, then you're going to be good to go. So what tells us if this is a successful uh, launch of an ETF? At what point do we say, okay, this worked out, this is the future, this is uh, Bitcoin's bull moment? Or a, a, how, many, how much in assets have to go into it before we could say this actually worked out for, for Bitcoin? Well, I think, as I said, coming out of the gate, well, like with any new IPO, I like to give it at least a week. So if we get good volatility and good liquidity and we develop some kind of a ongoing interest and we see the coin itself continue to move up, then I think that would probably be enough evidence. But look at something like coin, actually C-O-I-N. 
that took a while. It launched, it did well, it crashed, it found a base at around 200, and now it's trading over 300 today. So if you're just patient enough, that's where this historical price data and also seeing some volume will be interesting. I mean, it, it's, this may sound a little silly, but I'll be also interested to see what Kathy Wood wants to do here because she was an investor in coin all the way down because she believed in it. It'll be interesting to see if she expresses any interest or buys anything in this new ETF. Michelle, this has been such a hotly anticipated event, and there have been some analysts warning about buy the rumor, sell the news. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet, but is there a danger of that? Is there a danger that we could see some sort of steep drop off in Bitcoin after some of this hype wears down? Well, of course, because everything cycles, and that's particularly volatile. And as we mentioned in the very beginning, we are into some resistance here with people who look at yearly pivots looking at this area as a potential double top. So you have to be aware of that. But it wouldn't necessarily be the thing to scare you from doing it. Like I said, as long as if it clears this resistance, it keeps going up. And, you know, you, you had mentioned before earlier in the show, I was listening about a spot ETF. And I think GBTC is considering that, the grayscale uh, ETF over the counter uh, GBTC. So that would be something to look for. I mean, Valkyrie is coming out on Wednesday with an ETF that is, interestingly, BTFD, which is very funny. Um, so it's just going to continue. So I think the bigger issue for people is going to be focus. What do I focus on? I know I'm going to have that issue because it's like a child in a candy store right now. There's going to be so many things to look at besides the companies like Lawrence mentioned, riots up today, for example. We actually got into overstock because that also has a Bitcoin relativity to it. And also right now it clear some congestion. So I think it's going to be a matter of what do you focus on? You want to buy HUD or Hive? You want to buy Beto? You want to buy this new issue that's coming out potentially with Valkyrie? Do you want to actually stick to the coins? Do you want to expand from Bitcoin and Ethereum into just blockchain technology? Do you want to look at XRP or Litecoin or these other things? So I think it's going to behoove investors to try to figure it all out. And the other exciting thing, by the way, I just want to mention is interactive brokers is now expanding crypto oh. services to their RIAs. Oh, Michelle, we're just going to just interrupt you here. We're just moments away from the public debut of the first Bitcoin futures ETF in the United States. ProShares Bitcoin strategy will be trading under the ticker BITO on the New York Stock Exchange starting today. They've just rung the bell. So there it is, a big, big momentous event of significance in the crypto industry, the first Bitcoin futures ETF in the United States. There we have it. All right. <laughs> well, our job is done. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess, I guess we're done here. That's it? No. Well, as Michelle had said, that a Bitcoin spot ETF is still something that needs to be achieved. This is a crawl, walk, run, uh, it seems, in terms of getting the, this ETF, Bitcoin-related ETF, across the finish line for the SEC. And so we'll see what happens with this Bitcoin futures ETF, if uh, all proves to be, you know, above board, perhaps they'll be more comfortable with introducing a spot ETF. And as Michelle said, that uh, Grayscale is looking to convert their uh, their trust into a Bitcoin ETF, and that would be the biggest uh, fund to enter in the space if that were to happen. All right, Michelle, All right. we're going to wrap it there, but thanks for joining us. That was Market Gauge Group Managing Director Michelle Schneider. All right.